Hi there. Welcome to another edition of Relationship Sanctuary this week. And um, today we have a very interesting conversation um, surrounding marriage. And I have a very interesting guest who will join me pretty soon. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to um, Relationship Sanctuary. Relationship Sanctuary is our weekly um, program where we talk about everything, relationship, marriage, and everything you know in between family life and all welcome pastor Olushegumokolu. thank you so much for joining thank you so much thank you so much for the honor thank you so much for being here um we're discussing something pretty interesting today something that is not new to you and then um, what our topic today is managing external threats that can tear marriage apart we understand that marriage is not you know an easy journey yeah it can be a fulfilling journey it can be a happy journey but it might not be an easy journey because work is always needed just as how we are told in the bible to work out our salvation in like manner marriage is that place where we're going to continue to work out our own mar marriage but that brings me to my first question for you um pastor olushegun um is marriage being threatened you know presently uh, 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 do, we, do we see the marriage institution as a place where there are threats you know all right once again um, thank you so much for having me good to see you um yeah. to the question uh, you see in my own judgment mm -hmm. and my understanding yeah. marriage is not under attack okay i think the, the problem is that uh man has neglected the modality god's modality for marriage okay when it was god who recognized the need for marriage in Adam. It was God who made the woman. Adam could never have had a relationship with the woman without God. Today we mm. are trying to have a relationship with each other without God. That is the basic problem in marriage. We mm. have pushed God out. He created okay. it. We are looking for all manner of solutions mm. outside of God. Mm. People want to listen to to any form of solution to marriage or to mm. marital problem but it must be outside of god mm. the truth is that mm. it's none you will just keep moving around formulas around suggestions and so on but the, the fundamental problem is that maybe we can say man is under attack but marriage is not under attack because man has neglected god man mm -hmm. has pushed god out of marriage mm. god mm. created marriage for his own purpose it was mm -hmm. God who had a purpose in mind and created a man to fulfill that purpose. Mm -hmm. And then said, that man cannot do it alone. Let me provide somebody to help him. Yeah. So the whole essence of marriage, it's about God. Today mm -hmm. we've made it about ourselves. Mm -hmm. I was watching a TikTok video today and a lady was asked, what do you want in a man? He said, a man that meets my expectations. You see, there's no way you could literally predict that if she goes into marriage, is going to end up very badly because mm -hmm. marriage is not about your expectation what were the expectations of the woman when she was created what was mm -hmm. the expectation of adam as far as the two of them were concerned it was god that held them together mm -hmm. it was god mm -hmm. that brought them together and mm -hmm. you notice that as long as the relationship between them and god was in order they didn't have problem with each other as right. soon as they sinned the Bible said their eyes were open and they discovered they were naked. And I'm like, okay, you were naked, but you were just two, husband and wife. Why should that be a problem between the two of you? You were just two human beings on the face of the earth for crying out loud. What is the problem? But they made leaves to cover themselves. From mm. who? Mm. From each other. So they started hiding from each other. Why? So they were not only ashamed before, before God, they were also ashamed of one another. Mm. That was the mm. genesis of the pro of problem in marriage, and okay. but unfortunately, many have not gone back to look at that. And so, what we are trying to do is now we are trying so hard to run marriage 
without God. Sincerely, I, I say to myself that there is no way I could have stayed married and have a peaceful marriage if God was not at the center of it. At least I know myself very well that it would have been an impossible mission uh, for me. And particularly also for that marriage. You know, marriage is not just two people living together. Marriage is two people brought together by God under a covenant to achieve God's purpose. So two people can live together for a lifetime, but that marriage will be inconsequential to God, will not have any usefulness to God. That's not the kind of marriage we are talking about or that I'm looking forward to having. I truly want to experience the desire of God that is bringing the two of us together for a reason, and we are able to fulfill that in the period that we have time. So essentially, it is not marriage that is under attack. Okay. It is the operators of marriage. Oh. It is the oper okay. operator, operators of marriage that are not mm -hmm. right. It's like, let me use this illustration. It's like my country. There is mm. nothing wrong with Nigeria. Something mm. is definitely wrong with those uh, administering leadership in mm. Nigeria. Yeah, but Nigeria as a whole is a fantastic country. Mm -hmm. The soil mm -hmm. is good for agriculture. Yeah. There are a lot of yeah. resources there. Mm -hmm. But something is definitely wrong with people managing it mm -hmm. that's exactly what the, the problem with marriage so it's not marriage per se it's just the two individuals so sometimes they now focus on marriage they say oh mm -hmm. this marriage is problematic and then they excuse themselves not mm -hmm. knowing that they themselves are the marriage so what exactly is marriage so in other words we can't isolate marriage from the people operating in the marriage right it's not possible okay. it, it is the people who are operating marriage that are the real deal in marriage mm -hmm. once those mm -hmm. two people are wrong everything mm -hmm. else no matter what you teach no matter what you do it is going to go wrong that's okay. why you see god made the man in his image god formed the woman god brought the woman to the man the kind of man that god designed marriage for was a man created in his own image the kind of right. woman god designed marriage for was a woman that God made. You see, when they say God made somebody, it means the hand of God is on that person. Mm -hmm. When they say God formed somebody, the hand of God is on that person. Today we have men that we cannot trace the hand of God in their lives. We have women, we can't trace the hand of God in their life. Now they are coming together to get married. It's, it's going to be chaotic. Okay, right. Right. So um, marriage is, in, I mean, in your own words, marriage is not under attack. The people in it are under attack, which brings me to my next question. Why are these people, why, why is man, why is woman, you know, operating in the marriage institution under attack? You know, because we understand that um, it was the same you know, when God brought Adam and Eve together in the Garden of Eden. You know, the first attack we witnessed was, you know, still against, you know, um, the man and the, and the woman. Though it came from, first from the woman, you know, we had the devourer, the serpent coming to try to break down and tear down the family unit system. And, you know, that, that may not, or that hasn't even stopped up till now. So why then, why is man and woman under attack, under the umbrella of marriage? Why do we have this attack at a time like this? you know, in life. All right. You see, if you go to war and you have jet fighters in the mm. sky who are going to help you to bomb the enemies mm. as one of your two, and then mm. you have um, you have foot soldiers who are also going to move into the enemy ter territory, you have tanks, you have various armory, then you have navy, and so on. What the enemy we do is this if we attack your aircraft we attack your tanks your navy plates and so on because all of them represent your strength in that battle so if you mm -hmm. can take them out then you mm -hmm. can finally get to you mm -hmm. the goal of satan is to cut off man from god every, mm -hmm. every other thing that is attached to man will be affected as soon as man's relationship with God is affected. Right. So man's personal, man himself, each, every one of us as individual, we become troubled and restless because we do not have a relationship with our creator. Mm -hmm. In the same 
same way, marriage also will be affected because it is the operators of marriage that determines what happens in a marriage. Right. So for and the marriage was a tool that God created to spread his life on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Remember, God breathed his life into Adam and then he yep. said he should multiply. But before right. he could before he could multiply, he had sinned and he couldn't multiply. But you see, so so there are two things going on today: the marriage of, of a believer and the marriage of unbelievers. Those two marriages face different kind of threats. Mm -hmm. The marriage of unbelievers, number one, that marriage can't serve the purpose of God. And because the two of them do not have the life of God. They are going to run it with their brain and they can only go as far as their brain can take them before they run into a problem. Mm -hmm. But for believers, our we now have a new covenant and our marriage now represents the relationship between church and Christ. Right. And so our, our marriage becomes a threat to the kingdom of darkness because whatever two of you shall agree on he will do it marriage presents a unique opportunity where two people become like-minded and can agree on in prayer and can defeat the kingdom of darkness satan doesn't want that and so right. he attacks those marriages vigorously mm -hmm. with all kinds of subtlety that mm -hmm. i'm not too sure we may we may be able to go through here but at least to understand that there are two kinds of marriage marriage of unbelievers and marriage of believers and each one face different threat the marriage of the unbelievers faces a threat from their own flesh from their mm. own sinful nature mm. the marriage of the believer faces a threat from the kingdom of darkness to mm. disrupt to distract to ensure for example couples that are fighting that are not talking with each other in good terms how can they pray how can their prayer be fair? how can they be so winners how can they right. set examples in the society so they are not going to be able to shine as light because satan mm -hmm. knows that if you leave these christian couples they are going to be a serious threat to my kingdom when, when two couples are united mm -hmm. you can't predict how far god can use them and particularly right. in bringing people to the kingdom in saving souls and so on. so the marriage i tell believers once you marry you have entered into a conflict zone right from genesis marriage was even back in a conflict zone because there was darkness for which they were to spread light and overcome he said they should have dominion they should subdue mm -hmm. you right. don't subdue if there is no force right. so they were already created in a conflict zone mm -hmm. but as long mm -hmm. as their relationship with god was okay it didn't matter they will excel they will function up to today is still the same thing as mm -hmm. long as our relationship with jesus is in place right. is in right. order there is mm -hmm. no threat that satan can bring mm -hmm. it will be defeated mm -hmm. right right beautiful now which brings me um to this next question but before the next question um truthfully you know we, we have a lot i like what you said you talked about um we were, uh, we've been asked to dominate you know and then to subdue and so if god never perceived or if there were i mean there were we didn't have um, you know forces or pushbacks there wouldn't have been that uh, uh, um mandate for man and woman to go and you know dominate you know and replenish the earth and all of that now coming now bringing all of this to this present parlance you know our present day world understanding that we are in the last days a lot is happening around us all around the world you know in the u.s in nigeria in ghana everywhere no part of the world is free from the antiques of the devourer so now bringing this now into this present world what sort of threats do couples you know or marriages I mean, what, what sort of threats are they exposed to? When we say external threats that can tear couples apart, destroy marriages, destroy families, what sort of threats are we talking about here? All right. Um, in Mark chapter 3, verse 25, Jesus said, A house divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Mm -hmm. A great threat 
to marriage is not first external, mm -hmm. it's internal. Yeah. Actually, there is no demon, there is no human being that can ever defeat marriage mm -hmm. successfully mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. there was no problem internally. External mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. that, that affect marriage are mm -hmm. possible because there is an internal problem. Mm -hmm. a, a, a lady goes to work, she's married. A man began to be nice to her at work. Before you know it, they began to have affection for each other. A romantic relationship developed. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, they ended up becoming intimate. Mm -hmm. You can mm. say, oh, the work environment is toxic. But the work mm. environment is not the problem. The problem is that there was something fundamentally wrong because the scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence. For right. out of these are the issues of right. life. The Bible right. says, he that commits adultery lacks sense. He says, he that does that destroys his own soul. Mm. Somebody who wants to please Jesus knows that adultery is a no 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 mm. i give you an exa another example there are in-law issues that often causes problem in homes you can say oh they are external issues but there is no in-law on the face of the earth that can affect a marriage where the husband and wife are united mm. it, it is impossible any marriage where you see an in-law problem the problem is not the in-law, it's the couple. The greatest mm. threat to marriage is internal, it's not external. Okay. If there is no let me, problem... Let, let me butt in here. Be, let me, okay. Can I butt in here, please? Yeah. So we don't lose track of what you're saying now. Help us. I mean, there are people out there who, who are watching and are, are trying to like wrap their mind around what you just said. You said um, no external issue, as in more like we can trace every external issue in marriage to an internal you know source now can you give us a practical example like when you talked about couples that have issues with their you know um, in-laws maybe mother-in-law father-in-law sisters-in-law brothers-in-law how exactly can you trace that in you know into the uh, uh, um, can you trace that to the people who are involved yes yes in fact that was the example i was going to say that okay people usually have problem with in-laws. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, mother-in-laws, brother-in-laws, mm -hmm. sister. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had sincerely countless stories mm -hmm. of in-laws stepping in, into marriage, destroying marriage, creating chaos and so on. But all of that, the in-law were really not the problem. It was the couple. Why? Because the couple, they were not united. Okay. The Bible says, for this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother mm. and cleave mm. to his wife. Yeah. As long as husband and wife are one yeah. on every yes. issue. So, for example, as a man, you you want to deal with your in-law in a, 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 on a particular issue. You sit down with your wife and say, they are, this is what they are saying. This is what they are discussing. What should we do? And then you both agree. And then you both take a stand together it's not as if they are talking behind with the wife and they are saying different things to the husband and the husband mm. and the wife themselves are divided it's not see I, i've seen couples that any little fight the, the the lady go and report to the man's father the the man also go and report to the lady's father already you have opened your marriage mm -hmm. already you are already inviting problem into your marriage nothing I, in, in my experience i have discovered that nobody no one on earth can ever affect a marriage where husband and wife are one and are living by the word of God. There is nobody. Infidelity mm. cannot break that marriage. Mm. Forces at work cannot break that marriage. Environmental issues. All of those issues becomes uh, a problem when there is already a problem on the inside. The, the mm. internal threat. Mm. Once we mm. can deal with the internal threat, I'm telling you, the external threat will naturally be neutralized. The mm. problem is that we have left the internal threat. We are not trying to deal with a lot of the external threat, forgetting that those external threats are because of the internal problem. A lady feels that her husband is not there for her, that her husband has neglected her, 
and then she met a man who gives her attention and so on. Now, notice she felt her husband has have neglected her. The husband may truly have neglected her. So on the part of the husband, there was a problem. The lady herself, even if somebody had neglected you, is it sin that you want to use as comfort? Is it unrighteousness you want to use to comfort yourself just because somebody has neglected you? If you were not married, would you not have lived a successful Christian life? Mm. So you see that on her own part too, she's defeated on the inside and so she may give in to that temptation. The man also who is not loving his wife as Christ loved the church has also created some rooms. But as long as the two of them truly come together and they are one, there is no external threat. External threat becomes an issue because there is an internal threat. Okay. Without that internal threat, external threat cannot do anything to any man. Okay, right. So yet again, you, you talked about um, when two couples are in agreement on every thing you know in everything on every level when they agree with themselves now let's bring this home you know a bit now we understand let's let's try to be um let's try to paint realistic instances how do i mean we understand that in marriage sometimes differences cannot be even when you try to avoid them there are times you would find differences there are times when you have you know, seasons of downs, those down times when you're dealing with conflicts and all. I'm trying to see how how easy can it be for a couple to be in agreement at every time, on every issue, in every situation, you know? There are times when these things come, you know, will come as conflict, disagreement, you know, arguments here, arguments there. But we understand that inevitably, you know, they will say, okay, let us, it's okay to disagree to at least agree so how easy can it be for a couple you know a married couple you know who's been married for five ten years 15 20 30 or maybe even the newly wedded ones how easy you know can it be for them to agree and then you know something they would also still say you know the same couples or people will also still say that when you have a couple who are always when a uh, um, husband says okay let us go left and wife follows left, you know. Um, in every case, there are times when even he's leading them to the left can lead them to disaster. Or when a woman says, Okay, my husband, I think, you know, I think I've thought about this, let us go right. And the man says, Okay, since he's my wife, okay, let us go right. There are times when such decisions can still land them, you know, in problems. So, how easy is it, you know, for a couple to be in agreement? at every given time on every given issue how realistic is that and if it if, if it's not realistic how can they manage how can they maneuver to always be at the same level at every time all right uh, let me start by making a statement that people may may be shocked it is extremely easy okay you said how is it is extremely extremely easy. In fact, it is not even complicated at all. Don't forget, before you are a married person, you are first of all a child of God. Yeah. People neglect it. It's like asking you, how easy it is to have a relationship with Jesus? How easy it is for us to always agree with Jesus on every matter all the time? Jesus is the husband of the church. If you want to understand marriage, you've got to look at Jesus. I'm going to read something to you to show you why I said it is extremely easy. And I will show you where the problem really is. Mm -hmm. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, okay. I'm just going to okay. highlight a few things. Uh, let me jump and let me jump to verse 2. It says, Fulfill ye my joy that number one, ye be like minded. Number one, ye be like. This is an instruction of the scriptures. You see, the problem is that people have neglected the manual for marriage. People are trying to run marriage with their head. It doesn't work. It won't work. It says be like-minded. If God will not tell us to be like-minded, if we cannot be like-minded, how do we now like-minded? 
does not mean that um, you are going to be me, I'm going to be you. Mm -hmm. It is a common goal that brings people into like-mindedness. A common goal. Mm -hmm. Now, this common goal here is Christ. As a husband, my focus is to love my wife as Christ loved the church. We quote it, but we often don't see that and ask ourselves, how exactly did they love the church? It wasn't a romantic love. It, it wasn't a sweet love. When the Bible says, and he gave himself, do you know the Bible simply was saying, Jesus came and died for a people that were not good. And he's saying, that is love. And he's saying, husband, that's how to love your wife. There are different ways to love a woman. The recommendations of scripture is that love your wife as Christ loved the church. Most men, when they tell me stories, I ask them one simple question. Have you loved that woman as Christ loved the church? Then they keep quiet. I say, so you see, you see where the problem lies. You are doing so many things, but you did not do the only thing that you have been asked to do. Have you even found out how did Jesus love the church? What God has called husband to be is that if my wife has never met Jesus before, and suddenly Jesus comes into our house, and I'm not at home, and Jesus spends three days, my wife should be able to say at the end of the day, Lord Jesus, you are so similar to my husband. This is just the way he does things. Wow. Because he's simply saying to a man, be Christ to your, to your wife. That's what he's saying. People don't pay attention to this. So he says, be like-minded. That's number one. Number two, he says, having the same love. The same kind of love. This love, you can find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4. He says, this love suffers long. I thought, I thought he would say love gives flower. And by this, I'm not in any way saying it's wrong to give flower. I thought it would say love gives you cho chocolate. That's not what he said. He said love, <laughs> believe it all things. Hope it all things. By this, I'm not saying if you want to give chocolate, don't give. Please go and give your chocolate. Oh but just God. know that that's not love. Yeah. <laughs> love, uh, yeah. is a love is a serious business. Love is a commitment. That's why when I see people getting excited about marriage, I know that they don't understand marriage. Because when you look at what love is, it's not exciting. <laughs> Shouldn't marriage bring excitement? <laughs> no, 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 no. So, see, so we must understand what should see. We we find marriage exciting because of our selfish kind of desires. But any man, I, I keep telling people on my wedding day, my video is there, my picture is there. I wasn't like happy, 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 happy the way people. My wedding day is not my happiest day. It's not even close to my happiest day. Really? Because as I stood and we were moving from program to program that day, I was asking myself one single question. How do I love a woman as Christ loved the church? Mm. That sense of responsibility dawned on me. I wasn't thinking of the sex we were going to have that night. I wasn't thinking of, oh, somebody was going to cook my food. No, just, just see, those are not the purpose of marriage. Those are benefits of marriage, not purpose. It's like when you are giving an official car and bonuses at work. Official car is not the purpose is the work. Okay. Okay. So let me butt in here. Let me butt in here, Pastor Lushego. So what is the benefit of marriage? Those, you said those are the, more like the largest, the largest that comes with marriage, the, this, this. what is the purpose of marriage? B putting yourself now in perspective, you gave us an instant, you know, during your wedding day, you were thoughtful, you were thinking, how exactly are you going to love your wife as Christ, you know, love the church? So putting yourself, you know, in perspective, what exactly is the purpose of marriage? It's very simple to understand the purpose of marriage. You just, okay. you see, when they asked Jesus about marriage, Jesus said, have you not read that in the beginning, anybody that wants to understand marriage must read in the beginning. What happened in the beginning? In the beginning, God created man. And then one day God said, it is not good for man to be alone. However, before then, God had given a man an assignment. Marriage, what God didn't create marriage to address loneliness. It is to address aloneness. There are two different things. Adam was not 
only. It is not possible for a man that fellowships with God to be lonely. Right. It's not possible. Right. God comes in the cool of the evening to fellowship with him. It's not loneliness. That's why he himself didn't see a need for a woman. And God said, I'm going to create a woman to help you. That word help shows that the man has something he was doing. And what was Adam doing? Adam had no ambition. Adam was not living for himself. Adam was living for God. In a simple sense, marriage is the coming together of two people under God to fulfill the purpose of God. It's not to fulfill our own personal desires and so on. But you see, in the, in the process of serving God, it will, it will feed you, it will clothe you. For example, sex produces children, but there is pleasure with sex. That pleasure is just bonus. It's not the purpose. God could have created sex such that we would have sex and produce children without pleasure. But if you put pleasure there. So if you want to have a child, Though you have pleasure, the pleasure is not the purpose. When you see couples who are who are looking for fruit of the womb, yeah, that's when you will know that sex is not a it's no longer about pleasure. It's mm -hmm. now business. Yeah. It's now a serious work. True. So when you look at God, what He did in Genesis, He created marriage in a context that He has an assignment for the man, and the mm. woman is coming to play a part in that assignment. Mm -hmm. So even the woman, she was not created to look for love. She mm -hmm. was not looking for somebody to take care of her. God created her to meet a need. The woman, a woman is actually, you see, many women don't even know who they are. A woman was created to actually supply a need. She was not created to be the one who has a need. The woman didn't need the man. It was the man that needed the woman. Today we have turned it upside down. The woman thinks she needs a man. The woman thinks she can't live without the man. It was the man that could not fulfill God's purpose without the woman. Mm. And when the woman came, she was naked. And I was asking myself, God, how can you say you are creating a help? And that help came naked. People say, what does the woman bring on the table? Mm. When God brought a woman, it was a naked woman. She had nothing in her hand. How could she be a help? But Adam said something. They said, this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. The help of a man in a, a woman is hidden in her. The only way a man can bring that help out is to love that woman as Christ loved the church. That's why the Bible mm. keeps saying, husband, love your wife, love your wife. It's, it is to your own favor to love your wife. It is to right. your own foolishness to hate your wife. The right. only way you can bring out the best in a woman is to love that woman. Mm -hmm. Even that's right each one of us in our work with god it is to the degree to which we perceive how much jesus loved us mm. it is to that degree we are committed to him mm. so love is what unlocks the help that god has deposited in a woman that's why she could come naked she doesn't need to hold anything she may not have a degree she may not <laughs> look like miss world she may not carry a bag she mm. doesn't need to carry bring plates to your house she doesn't need to bring any table to a table the help a woman renders to a man is inside. That's why many husbands treat their wives with trivialities because they can't see anything now. Oh, this useless woman. It's only a foolish man, sorry to say, that says his wife is foolish because you are you don't know what God has deposited. Every woman you see walking about, there's something God has deposited in them. It is because the key, which is the love of Christ, is not available to unlock it. Right. When a woman Man touches the love of Christ, it brings out the happiness. So, in a nutshell, marriage is is God bringing a man, a man, one, and a woman, one, together for them to fulfill His purpose. So, every right. purposeful marriage must be striving mm -hmm. to fulfill the purpose of God. God, right? Beautiful. Okay, now, what are those? Um, um, considering the we, we've talked about the um, external forces, the kind of um, sorry external threats that can try to tear a marriage down. What are some practical steps? Few steps, you know, that viewers right. you know, may want to apply to their marriage, especially if presently you know they are going through such a time as that in their marriage. All right. Um, you see, I, I get asked this question a lot. People ask me. What are the practical steps we can take? 
What are the steps? What are those things that I can begin to do now, 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 now? And I tell them, I say, see. The first and most practical step is to return to God. There is nothing more practical than returning to God. Both ways, when the, is right? The man and ways, the woman. Both yeah. ways. Mm -hmm. When the prodigal son realized that he was wasting his life, he took a decision to return back to God. That was a practical step. He mm. said, I will, I will arise and go back. You must return to his word. The, that's the first, you must, under, that's why I was reading that passage. He said, be like-minded, be of the same love, be of one accord. All these things are different. Like-minded, mm -hmm. one accord, one mind. He said, mm -hmm. let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, mm -hmm. but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Mm -hmm. See, these are simple things that scripture is giving us. The practical steps are in the word of God. Depending on the situation that they face, I can't say the woman that I also always speaks very terrible words to her, verbal abuse. So she reached out to me. So I told her, I said, see, the Bible says that you should be of a meek and quiet spirit. He mm -hmm. said, this is of great, great importance in the mm -hmm. sight of God. Mm -hmm. I said, next time your husband says, you are this, you are this, you are this. Don't utter one word. Mm. Keep quiet. So, and it just happened, I think, the following day, the same thing happened. What is this? What, who is this dirty person? That Who is this? She kept quiet. She said, I'm sorry. She'll go and do what the husband said. she said, I'm sorry. She'll go and do this. Unlike before, when she will reply, it will be a fight. Then they will not talk to each other for the next two weeks. And then, you know, those circles just keep repeating itself. So she kept quiet. When the husband came back from work, the husband met her reading, reading her Bible. They greeted, she welcomed, she had prepared his food, did everything. The following morning, the husband now came. He became afraid. He came to hug the wife. The wife found this strange, said, I'm going to work. The wife said, all right. He got to the door, he came back, said, ah, that hug was too casual. Just hug me properly. So the wife hugged him again. When he got to the gates, he came back into the house. Uh -huh. To request for a pet, mm -hmm. the wife mm -hmm. pet him. The wife didn't understand what was happening. This man, as soon as he got to office, he called the wife. How are you? How is everything? Wow. The wife told me that she had this. Uh, they've been married for seven or eight years. He said, "My husband doesn't call me when he gets to office." So that day, the man kept calling her, checking on her. She was feeding me back that she's confused. That's why. Why is this man doing all of these things to me? Eventually, when the now, the man does not give up, can you imagine? The man does not give the wife money to buy things. For the first time that day, the man transferred money and said, please, you are going to be the one to get some things wow. for the house. Wow. wow. The man came back and the man was like, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm just afraid. The wife said, why are you scared? There's nothing wrong. You have no need to scared. You know, so eventually I now told her, I said, what is happening is that finally you allowed God to fight for you. Yeah. You've been using what? wisdom they've told you talk back stand let him know that you two you are not a stupid woman son. and so you fought for yourself but the bible says that, that the battle is the lord he said hold thy peace yeah, yeah. he said you will yeah. not need to fight mm. for yourself mm. so mm. It, when he said is when he said let nothing be done through strife he said but in loneliness of heart of mind esteem other better than themselves he mm. said let each esteem other better than themselves Look mm. not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Remove selfishness. You see, selfishness is the number one killer of marriage. Marriage yeah. was not designed to thrive in an atmosphere of selfishness. Unfortunately, right. human beings are selfish. Mm. And until you allow God to deal with selfishness, in fact, you are not really ready for marriage until God has dealt with selfishness in your, marriage, in, in, in your life. When people want to marry, they ask them, what do you want? I want somebody that does this for me, that can do this for me. The whole perspective is about what you can get. When did you hear somebody says, I want a man that I can love. I want a man that, that I can serve. I want a man that we can pray together and fulfill the purpose of God. No, the whole thing everybody wants, a woman that does this, a woman that can treat me like king, treat me like this, treat you like this, treat you like this, is all selfishness. So, so until we go back...
Yeah. So is that that particular selfishness, that um, sort of you know being self-centered when it comes to thinking about yourself? Do we have it more rampant now? Because we know that marriage says in the, sorry, the Bible talks about people being lovers of themselves in every yes. area of life. So yes. are we are we can that also be a product of we being in the end time, you know, in the perilous times? Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that, generally speaking, in the perilous time, uh, men will become lovers of themselves. So men have always been selfish, but mm -hmm. we are seeing it at a rate we have not seen it before. Yeah, however, true. however, however, you see, as believers, when we look at the prophecy about end time, it has two streams. Okay. As if is getting more evil and darker, mm -hmm. so is mm -hmm. light shining also brighter and brighter. Mm. He says, See, darkness covers the earth, but the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. As believers, this is the best time for us to shine. This is the best time for because, see, if you get things right a little bit today, people will celebrate, people will say you are experts, mm -hmm. people will say you are fantastic, and it's mm -hmm. because what people see around is darkness. Mm -hmm. So, whenever they see you, See, as believers, our life is not to be subject to the evil that is increasing in the society, right. but to the right. grace that is available in our Lord Jesus right. Christ. So even though the society is becoming more selfish, more self centered because see, I, I, I'm very clear in my mind. I differentiate. I say, see, if you are not a child of God, honestly, you can't, can't practice the kind of marriage we are teaching mm -hmm. because you don't mm -hmm have the light on the inside mm. and mm. if you can't do that i don't know what you want to do because you are going to be operating marriage with your energy of the flesh yeah. and it can't work the arm of the flesh will fail you mm -hmm. but if you're a child of god if you are born again then you can be rest assured that mm -hmm. you're because as a christian forget marriage as a, a person that has denied himself pick up yeah. his cross and is following Jesus, mm. there is a way we are supposed to live our lives. It is that way of life that we have brought into marriage. So mm -hmm. it is who you have before marriage that you are bringing into marriage. Mm. Marriage is not making you worse. It is who you have always been. Marriage just provides an opportunity to test it. If anger is in you, marriage will bring it out. If selfishness is in you, it will become obvious in marriage because while you are alone, we may not know so much that you are a very selfish, self-centered person. But in marriage, it becomes obvious. So fundamentally, if our work with Jesus personally is right, our marriage will be right because okay. we don't have two lives. Okay. It is the same life that we take into marriage. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Now, so let's come to you. I know you've been married a while, a long while. Um, personally, you know, as a husband, as a father, as a man of God, you know, that you are, um, what perhaps we can glean and, you know, we can tap into your brain, you know, today, <laughs> what have, what, what steps or what has, um, even though you, I know you've mentioned it, mentioned part of it, what has, I mean, what's that thing that's been helping you, you know, overcome that external you know, threats, those external threats that might be threatening to tear your marriage apart because we understand that no marriage is immune to these threats. It is now our ability, each person's ability to say, okay, this is what is working for me based on my work with Christ, based on my relationship with God. So personally, you as a person, what, what, what's been helping you, you know, to maneuver, to navigate, you know, your marriage all these years, even with the threats that we have. All right. Um, a very, very good question. Um, and I'm going to share something with you mm -hmm. that has been like um, my major compass in, in marriage. Okay. But before I do that, I want to also state that uh, my journey started before my marriage. Okay. I didn't marry the way most people got married most people the way they got married was that they found somebody they fell in love and then they got married that's mm -hmm. how most people got married that's not how yeah. i got married okay the way i got married in in two minutes is god told me on a day that uh, i'm going to meet my wife 
and this is her name. This is the church she will be attending, and this is her profession. And it was on a Tuesday I was driving, and then on Friday for the first time in my life mm. I came in contact with that woman. I've wow. never met her before. And on Saturday we began to speak, and then on Sunday I went to that church to meet her, and everything God told me about her was spot on. Mm. And then I still went back home and I said, Lord, please, from your word, show me that this woman is my wife. And the Lord told me, he said, open your Bible and begin to read. I opened to that passage and I kept reading. And at the point I said, Lord, I can't say anything. I, I know this story. I can't say anything. He said, keep reading. And I kept reading. Until finally, a verse jumped out. And I saw clearly, because that's the way he has been speaking to me before now. So I knew very clearly this is the word of the Lord. So I went to my wife. And my, the way I proposed was very quite funny. I said, God had called me to suffer for his name. Will you suffer with me? That was my proposal. You see, because mm. I was not going to promise you anything. The only thing I so, knew was that so, I was going to suffer. So yours was not the things we see on social media. You see a guy no, bending down, no, kneeling down. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. It was that simple. However, okay. however, you see, you see, I still, um, for example, for we, we caught it for four years. For those okay. four years, I was writing poem for her every single month. Wow. I have a compilation of poem for four years, every wow. single month. That is that is a uh, twelve times four. Every single month, I wrote wow. that. I have it. I'm going to put it in a book later on, oh. maybe when we are doing some wow. anniversary wow. and publish it. That, so that's it's beautiful. not that I wasn't romantic, you know. Mm -hmm. But I have to put all those ones down to first of all get it right with God, because you see the reason is this: if I don't marry the right person, I will suffer in marriage. The Bible says it is better. To dwell in a house, in the corner of a house, than to live in a big house with a stubborn woman. Mm -hmm. So there are people God doesn't want us to marry. He said, do yeah. not be a friend with an angry man. Mm -hmm. So if you go and marry an angry man and you now face the consequence in marriage, you see, you have yourself to blame. So marriage, yeah. first of all, starts with getting the foundation right. Mm -hmm. So I was yeah, right. very clear. I told my wife all that God, everything I'm doing today, I told mm -hmm. my wife. Everything mm -hmm. I'm doing today. I had them all written down. I told her, I said, this is what God wants us to do. I told my wife that at some point, I'm going to resign my job to mm -hmm. give full attention to ministry. Mm -hmm. This year, I resigned my job to give full attention to ministry after working mm -hmm. for 13 years. Wow. So everything wow. I told her, you know, is coming to pass. So now mm -hmm. moving into marriage, let me just read one verse. Okay. It says, Jesus said, therefore, all things was, uh, no, sorry. Uh, he said, Matthew 7, 24 to 25. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and mm. beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. When I mm. read this passage, I said, My marriage will not fail. Mm. I said, this is if there is something that is called guarantee that a marriage will succeed it is this verse mm -hmm. you see for me i have built my life over the years on scriptures so mm -hmm. what i do is this i said what did so what is jesus saying here that my marriage will not fail mm -hmm. so he said therefore whosoever hears the saying of mine and do them let me give you a very practical uh, example there was one christmas i know i love to invite by some of my Christian brethren to come around feast with us. But it's my, it's my wife that will do a lot of cooking. So my wife did a lot of cooking, put it in cooler, you know, fried rice, jollof rice, all kinds of things. We ate, we had fun. She was tired. One of us were tired it, late in the evening. We went to bed. I, I usually wake up very early. So I woke up early. I came to my study. I opened my Bible to study. And I said, I wanted to pray to say, Holy Spirit, teach me your word this morning. The Holy Spirit said, do you expect your wife to wake up to go and wash all those plates in the kitchen? Mm. Mm. So I left Bible. <laughs> I left mm. prayer. Mm. I went to the kitchen. Mm. You know coolers now, the coolers you use for occasions. Yeah. You know? So mm -hmm. it's not the regular washing. There yes. were pots. There were a lot of long spoons. Correct uh, washing. So I had to stay <laughs> Yeah, and do you know what interesting thing? As I was rinsing the last article, my wife woke up, came to the kitchen, and said, Oh, dear, thank you. She just said, Thank you. 
as I was watching the last article. So I went back. Now look at it. It's not that I was nice. I, want, I, I woke up to read Bible. I, I, I was not sensitive enough to note that this woman is tired. Mm. She would be mm. happy mm. if I had cleared all those mm. things. Mm. But the Holy Ghost knew. Mm. And the Holy Ghost mm. told me, mm -hmm. go and do it. And I obeyed. Yeah. And I obeyed. So yeah. it's a sin. Yeah. So yeah. see, he said, see, Jesus said something. He said, therefore, for all things whatsoever ye will, ye will that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. This mm. is the law and the prophet. Mm. This guides me a lot. Because why should I commit my adultery when I don't want my wife to commit mm. adultery? Mm. So anything I want my wife to do, I have to do it first mm. to her. So mm. all I'm doing in my marriage is searching daily what the wisdom of Christ yeah. in his word and applying yeah. it. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it is as simple mm. and as practical as mm. that. Wow. It is just ensuring mm. that, oh, this is what Jesus says. One day, one day my wife said something and I felt insulted. And I was like, how, how could she speak to me like this? And then the Holy Spirit said, who are you for, for you not to be insulted? Mm. And I realized that pride had set in. And mm. I suddenly traced myself back that it's true. Sincerely, who am I? I'm already dead. It is Jesus that is now living in me. So mm. if Jesus is not offended at our state, mm. who am I? Mm. And that was how it ended. Wow. No anger, no bitterness. It's wow. as simple as that. That yeah. I'm asking myself. I'm asking, in fact, I pray it regularly. I said, mm. Lord, show me how to treat my mm. wife. Because mm. God knows her better than I. He knows yeah. what will make her happy. Mm -hmm. He knows what I mm -hmm. should do mm -hmm. to keep us going together. Mm -hmm. I don't know any other way apart mm -hmm. from keeping to the teachings of Christ. And then wow. look at it. He said, flood came, rain descended. Those mm -hmm. are the external threats. Mm -hmm. And like he's telling you, once internal threat is eliminated, mm -hmm. external threat becomes useless. Right. He, all of those right. ones came. Every marriage right. will go through challenges. Every Absolutely. marriage. But Absolutely. if it is, is built on Jesus. Mm -hmm. it can yeah. The unfortunate thing is that most people do not build their marriage mm -hmm. on Christ. Mm -hmm. I have no other secret in marriage but Jesus. Wow. 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 Interesting. And you know, you just said something and it reminds me of this thing about good versus divine. Many times in life generally, People want to do, you know, they think when they do good things, you know, they, they want to do good. I need to do this thing because it's the right thing to do. For instance, you were reading your Bible. I mean, in that time, I mean, at that time, that was, I mean, perhaps one of the best things you were supposed to do. It was good that you had picked up your Bible to read. But then you now got a divine, you know, instruction. So this means that in our marriages, we need to know where to draw the line, you know, uh, between good and divine. Knowing when to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, just like you said. Perfect. Very wonderful. So, Pastor Olushego, I want to give you the opportunity, this, um, or the honor or the privilege this evening to pray for our viewers, you know, out there. It's one of the things I do every week when I bring guests on the show, especially if they are, you know, when they are pastors. There might be people watching right now, you know, who are struggling in their marriage or perhaps people who might watch the replay, you know, later who are struggling in one area or the other in their marriage, in their lives, and they have tried, you know. So I want you to join, their, um, join your faith with us um, um, today and pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for anything, any issue they might be going through in their marriage because we understand what John 10.10 10 says. It says, the devil only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus says, I, I have come to give life and give you even more abundantly. And speaking about, you know, coming to steal, kill, and destroy, we still see these things play out in our marriages. The devil every day is looking for what to steal in our marriage, looking for what to tear down and what to destroy. So please, Pastor, say a word of prayer for, you know, viewers out there, who are going through stuff in their marriage, just as we round up the program. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Um, before I pray, uh, let me just quickly react to uh, what you said about listening to the Holy Spirit and drawing a line. 
All right, uh, okay. Before I came into marriage, it was very clear to me that marriage comes before ministry. The Bible mm. says, if a man cannot rule over his own house, mm -hmm. how shall he rule the church of God? Mm -hmm. It's very clear. God would rather prefer that you go and treat your wife right than mm -hmm. for you to be doing what you say that be winning so. If the mm -hmm. gospel you are preaching cannot, you can't live with a woman with that gospel. Why are you exporting that gospel out? Mm -hmm. So I've always mm -hmm. considered mm -hmm. my wife, my child, priority in ministry. They come above ministry. Once ministry mm -hmm. is getting to a point that it will affect them, I would rather leave that ministry and face them because I'm responsible for them, first of all. And those other people I'm ministering to, they are somebody's mm -hmm. wife, they are somebody's children. So I must also mm -hmm. prioritize my own family. So on that yeah. note, uh, can we pray? Yeah. yeah. Our Father, we are grateful to you. Thank you, Lord, for this platform. Thank you for how you have sustained it over the years. Thank you, Lord, for my sister and her husband and their families who have you, labored, Lord. Lord, over families to mm. see that godly homes are built around the world. Father, on a day like this, we just come to cry unto you for mercy. Yes, you were the one, oh God, that reconciled Pilate and Herod. Mm. They were at enemies. But when Jesus visited the two of them, mm. they became friends suddenly. Lord, we are asking, whatever enemies that may have been formed in homes, mm. we mm. ask that Jesus will pass through such homes and touch such enmity to love. Lord, Amen. whatsoever crisis, whatsoever evil that they may have allowed to affect their homes, mm. Father Lord, we reverse it today. Amen. And we ask God that mercy will prevail over judgment. Amen. They may have made mistake in choice. They may mm. have made mistake in conduct. Mm. But Father Lord God, we are crying up unto you mm. because you do not desire that any should perish. Mm. And we are saying, Lord, in mercy, let yes, there be Lord. peace in every yeah. troubled marriage. Amen. As Jesus rose up and spoke to the storm, and there was mm. peace. These yes, marriages, Lord. oh Lord, that are going through the storms of life. Before yes, you Lord. will deal with the disciples, before you will dealt with their unbelief, mm. you dealt, oh Lord, with the storm. Yeah. Father, yes, we are Lord. asking for the same. That even though we know you will still deal with their mm. lives to align mm. them with you. Yes, Lord. First, Lord, we are praying. Every marriage going to storm. Amen. In the Amen. name of Jesus, Amen. you storm be calm. Amen. You storms be still. Amen. Let the Amen. peace that surpasses all understanding come into this home. Yes, Lord. Come into this marriage. Amen. Father, there are marriages that are already dead. There are marriages that are buried. There are marriages in mortuary. There are mm. marriages that are going to burial ceremony. Mm. Lord, we pray that the power of resurrection of Jesus yes, rest Lord. upon every of such and bring them back to life. There are marriages that men have said it is done. Yes, they Lord. are over. They cannot come back again. But mm. Lord, we cry unto yes. you that yes, you Lord. that comfort Lazarus and say, yes, Lazarus, Lord. comfort. Father, we mm. call these marriages. Let them come forth. Amen. From wherever Amen. grave they may have placed them, we Amen. call them back out. Oh Amen. Lord. We pray that your grace we prevail yes. in these homes, oh yes, Father. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, We Lord. bless your holy name. We give you thank all the glory. I pray, Lord, Jesus. that this platform, mm. oh Lord, mm. you will continue to prosper it. Amen. You will continue to use it for your glory. Amen. Lord, they will not get weary. They will not get tired. Amen. You will open door unto them, oh Lord, Father. Amen. You will guide them and you will lead them. I pray Amen. for their own marriage also, mm. Lord, that it will become yes, more Lord. deepened in Christ A Jesus. Amen. Lord, no storm, no flood, no water, no rain yes, Lord. shall pull Lord. it down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, merciful and gracious Father. Thank we you, thank Lord. you because you will do exceedingly abundantly yes, Lord. beyond yes, that Lord. which we can ask and think. For in yes, Jesus' Lord. mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen.